Hey developers, today we are doing something new. We are gonna look at the best code pens that I can find for Vue.js and we're gonna see which ones are really cool and which ones are not. So I went ahead and just searched here inside codepen.io. So if you don't know, CodePen's a website that anybody could create own snippets of code or even small projects in and share with others. Most of the time I see people use this to share like really cool CSS tips and tricks and things that they've done. But occasionally you see people upload stuff for Vue, React, and Angular. So I thought I would just search for Vue, look at each one of these projects and just tell you which ones I like and which ones I don't like. So I'm just gonna go through this. If you guys agree, or disagree with me on any of these projects, leave a comment below. So I'm just gonna click in each one of them and look at them. And if you wanna follow along, yeah, just search for Vue and CodePen and just take a look at some of these. All right, and if you're interested in Vue.js, I actually have a link at the bottom here. You can sign up for my mailing list. I'll send you a bunch of free cool stuff and a cheat sheet and you can learn Vue. So yeah, so let's just uh, jump in. So you could see here, here is a bunch of different code pens. So I'm just gonna start with the first one and take a look and see what it has to offer. So it looks like this is using Element UI and it just has a button and it's using Vue 2. And if you click the button, it gives a modal. Not very exciting, but it's interesting that this is here. So we'll just go back and take a look at what else is here. Okay, here's a view card carousel. Let's take a look at it. Uh, this is a little bit more interesting. This is kind of an old school way of doing things. You have this X dash slash template and it looks like all the links are broken. So this probably isn't a great way of doing things. This is kind of an older view two example. So once again, probably not one I'd recommend. It has 57,000 views and a few comments. So this one should be much better. This one has 96,000 views. This is by Sarah Drasner. She is on the view core team. She knows her stuff. So let's take a look. So, oh, that's funny. <laughs> so it looks like, oh, even has sounds. That's pretty cool. So yeah, so Wally is right here. He's, he follows your cursor around. So let's see how this is done. This is kind of neat. Um, so let's, yeah, using clip pass, some SVG stuff in here. This is neat. So it's a view two app. Looks like uh, using methods, using this timeline max. You can kind of take a look what they're using here. It looks like they're using Vue and TweenMax. Yeah, a lot of these ones are using G's app. So it's like a gra it's a animation library, but you can do a lot of cool stuff like this in there. This is not a bad example of how you may want to use Vue in the future uh, with something like G's app to do cool animations. Look, here's the audio coming straight out of an Amazon S3 bucket, I'm guessing. Yeah, this is kind of neat. Uh, here's the mounted hook and all the cool stuff with it. Yeah, so th this one I definitely uh, think is pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at this one, Parallax Depth Card. All right, so this looks like it's uh, using Vue 2. Let's take a look. Yep, using Vue 2, an older version of Vue 2. Yeah, I don't really like this. You see this a lot when people are using animation libraries and it's actually okay to use dollar sign refs, but it's a way to get references. And looks like uh, you use computed properties. I like this too. When you see people using computer properties, it means that they're really actually trying to use Vue instead of having it just be kind of a small wrapper around it. I haven't seen any projects yet that are actually using the Vue transition libraries. It will be interesting. And maybe uh, Sarah Drasner's had one, but I didn't see it, but maybe she does. I didn't see it when we just looked through it. Yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, it's a Vue 2 app. So let's take a look. Ooh, look at this a little parallax kind of moving around. I like it. Let's take a look. Yeah, so I'm guessing this is mostly the CSS that's doing this. Um, there's this no, yeah, there's no libraries involved in here. So this is all just done using CSS and different techniques. So this is kind of neat. Yeah, this cubic, uh, cubic bezier, uh, kind of neat. Yeah, for sure. Let's take a look at another one. And I wonder if there is, yeah, it's sorted by relevant, uh, relevance and popularity. So I think that's a good way to go through this. Let's take a look at this one here. So once again, we're using a Vue 2 app, a little bit older, 2.5.3, no animation libraries or anything like that. Okay, so yeah, just a really good looking uh, form. Once again, let's see here by Bella Varga. You can see here, this might be really cool. And he has right here, he just shows all the bindings. So let's see how he did this. So here's your data function. Here's some features. Uh, yeah, messages here. Here's some methods. This is kind of the old way of doing it with the submit method, submit function here. Here's your validate. So I wonder if he's using just a bunch of V model. Yeah, so here's a V model for name, all the different V models. Where is he using the validate? 
uh, validate function. Okay, so he has a watch. So this is what he's doing. It's kind of an interesting way of doing it. So he's using a watch variable on email, the email value. So anytime the value changes in the email, he runs this validate to see if the email is valid. So I guess right here, you put in a bad email, it has this little red line around it. But if you put in a, a good email, then it's fine, which is kind of neat. I'm seeing, I'm looking here if this email, yeah, here it is. So he has form email, in, input type email, name email, and a V model. Okay, so there's a, a handful of ways you can do validation on a form. I actually just did a video on it recently. Uh, this is not a bad way to do validation on it. The other way is you just look for, um, you can put it like a, a change on a change event or on an input change, then go ahead and run validation on it. You can also run the validation when someone hits the send form instead instead of uh, before that. But I think this would be kind of a neat way to do it. I've never seen too many people use a watch on the actual value like this since it has a built-in, you can just do the uh, the input event or the uh, change event. So I don't know why you would wanna like do a watch function like this, but it's kind of interesting way of doing it. Uh, in interesting. All right, let's do a couple of more. All right, let's do a couple more. Let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> All right, here's just a random select box. Um, so no matching options. So it looks like it's a view to app and it's using a component called vselect. So it looks like he's using the latest version of view two. And it looks like he's using a third party plugin called view select, which I've never used before, but it looks like it's really easy to use. <laughs> you can just pass in the options to it, which he did not pass any options. I guess we can pass our own. And then I guess once it's done build, yeah, so here it is. It looks, it's a nice select dropdown. It has a nice little animation on it. Very cool. All right, I guess we can do a few more. Oh, here's a credit card form in view. I wanna see how he did this. All right, so that looks neat. Oh, I like this. I like, this definitely feels like it might be using Tailwind, but it has a little shadow in the background and a pretty cool looking visa card right here. I'm not gonna put my own real visa number in here, but it, these are credit card inputs. Let's see how he did it here. All right, so it looks like he's using a view two app. He's using views a mask. Yeah, this is a masking library probably to put in when you put a fake number in. So here it is right here he has this data return. That's some new masking on, on mounted. It does this check. I, I think you could probably grab this card number. Oh, he's just doing a focus on it. Probably the better way of doing this would be to use a dollar sign refs on it instead of doing get element by ID. You don't need to necessarily do it that way. Here's a bunch of regular expression. This is good. He's using it computed, so it should update automatically. This is a lot of regular expression. Uh, watch and card year. Uh, once again, maybe you could try to use an event for this instead of using a watch, but that, that I mean, we'd have to see if that would work. There's a flip card. I didn't know, can you flip it? Oh, you can flip it. Oh, it does have a little bit of animation there. That's neat. Uh, maybe this is special focus input, blur input. Yeah, I think this is really neat. I guess he isn't using Tailwind. Let's see here. Uh, he's using his, nope, I don't see anything. He's uh, using his own CSS. He's using Google Fonts and just doing all, everything in here. This is a really neat example. Definitely if I was using credit card form, I would take a look at this to see how he did it. Oh, he's grabbing the image from some GitHub user content for the current background. And then he's using just normal V4s, VIFs, and using that third-party library to do the masking. And kind of neat. I'm using a if then else here. All right, let's take a look at one more. Let's take a look at one that looks really nice. Ooh, view timer comparison. Well, let's do this one. All right, so here is a bit, you can like check to see how far different things are. You can drag and drop it. Ooh, San Francisco to New York, JFK. Even has a little animation. That's pretty cool. Let's see how we did it. So it looks like we have, we're using view, an older version of view two, 2.3.4, GSAP again, like most of these demos use GSAP and D3 and Morph SVG. Uh, yeah, he uses in a lot of different libraries here. Let's see if I can kind of 
parse what he's doing. So here's your data object. These are like re your reactive stuff inside your view app. He has some filters built in. This filter has gone away in view three and you really could probably do this with a computed, I'm assuming. And then here's a bunch of D3 code on his mounted hook. This is usually what I see when I see people use D3. They oftentimes put a, a bunch of code in the mounted hook or one of the other lifecycle hooks as soon as the app loads. And it looks like he's using some data from a code pen bucket, uh, a code pen bucket for S3 for US states. And then he's using dollar sign ref. So he's trying to do it like a document get query or anything on it, which makes sense. He's using fetch, which I think is smart where he grabs the data and he has, uh, he's iterating through it. I think this probably could have been broken down into like three different methods. It's a lot of stuff here. And then methods here, random airport. Oh, it's randomized. That's kind of interesting. It's trying to get you like a random airport to start off with setting the markers. Here's like the drag. You could take a look at the HTML. Did he use? Yeah, cool. He's using mouse up, mouse leave. So you, that's probably the best way of doing uh, different events in here. Does he have like a drag event in here? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look through here. It doesn't look like he's using, here's mouse down. So he's using different events here to do it, but I'm not sure exactly how he's doing the drag and drop on this to make it all work correctly. Do you have, he has marker drag right here, marker drag. Let's see here, where is this marker stop, marker drag. Okay, so you see he's adding the event listeners manually on mouse move, and mouse up. I mean, that's that's fine. You could probably maybe figure out how to add the drag events directly in using view into whatever you're doing here. But adding the event listeners is okay too. And that's how a lot of people do it. And then using refs. All right, so that is uh, a few examples of what CodePen has to provide if you're trying to learn view or you're trying to find out what some cool projects are. Let me know below what you guys think. I'm not gonna edit this video too much, so you might hear me rambling. You probably just heard me rambling, but if you guys like this, uh, let, leave a comment below, let me know. I'll do more like this and we'll look at different projects and I'll do you know, quick code reviews of it. Thanks.